So now you have a tester, which means the first thing you want to do is test, right? But there is an annoying little step before that, and that is to test the tester. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and then we can keep going on. So if you take the tester and just touch the two ends, then what are you really testing for? If the tester itself is working, right? Even if you if you touch the two ends itself and then the bulb doesn't glow, then the tester itself is not working. So what we want you to do is do that first. Make sure your tester is working. So now you've tested the tester. Now you can go test other substances. I know you're going to kill me for doing this, but yes. So now that you've done this, we want you to test, say, a first material that you want to take. Now in this case, all of our materials are going to be liquids, right? We want to see if they conduct electricity. Is that take two of these ends and dip it into lemon juice and see if the bulb is glowing? So we took the bulb tester instead of say the magnetic needle, just just to make things simple. We could take, we could take any of these. So take the bulb tester, put it inside. What happens? It begins to glow, which means lemon juice is a good conductor of electricity, right? You've made one big step forward. First, you've understood that that's right. Liquids can conduct electricity, which you probably already knew because everybody was warning you, right? If you have your hands wet, don't go and touch the switch. You might get a shock. Why were they telling that? Yeah, probably water is a good conductor. You might think it is. Is it not? We'll go there. So lemon juice, good conductor. Now what are you going to do? Play with this even more. But you might not have noticed one thing though. The bulb is glowing so faintly, right? It's not really like some proper conduction of electricity is happening. It's very poor. So you're a little worried because what might happen is something might be a decently good conductor, but still the bulb may not glow because. Enough current is not flowing, so the bulb itself requires a lot of current. Then, allowing it to pass through some liquid like this might not give us a good idea. So, what could we do? Make it so that the bulb that we use requires very very little current. Now, where do we find such bulbs? They called LEDs, light emitting diodes. Most of your traffic signals, a lot of games, even even decorative things in our houses use these little little lights called LEDs. They are incredible lights because they use very very little energy, very little. Power, as you can call it, electric current, but they still end up giving out good intensities of light. Now, how are they able to do that? I know the keen ones amongst you have a question: Why is it that the electric bulb can't do that? Well, the thing is that it depends upon bo both of them. You might give them the same amount of energy, but what they convert it into matters a lot. This electric bulb, surprisingly, you may not you may not know this, converts the majority of the energy given to it into heat. Which is why it's a very bad idea if you go and try to touch an electric bulb. You know, you might think it's a bulb. So even if you switch it off and touch it, it's extremely hot. So a lot of the energy is going away as in our world as heat, which in other words is infrared. Now, you'll know a lot know a lot about this later on, but I'm just giving you these terms so that you will be very familiar with them when you actually come across them. So the normal electric bulb is going to waste a lot of energy as heat, whereas an LED doesn't do that. It's very it's a lot more efficient. It does what we want it to do. It's much rather than it's, it's rather than being efficient. It's very obedient. It does what we want it to do. So an LED could be a very good idea. It comes in different colors. So you use one of those. Then even for a small amount of current, it will glow immediately. So an LED will make a much better tester than a normal electric bulb would. And another recommendation that we have for you is that when you do test the tester, don't test the tester for a really long time because when you test the tester for a really long time. You're draining the battery really quickly because a lot of current is flowing. You're short circuiting the battery. Have you heard of uh, things getting, you know, electric appliances, electrical appliances getting spoiled by because of short circuit? Like a mouse bites, there's insulation off. There's every every wire that you usually see has a rubber insulation on it or a plastic insulation. If some mouse or something bites it off, then two things come in contact. It's exactly what you're doing with your tester, right? A lot of current flows. It might even burn. Whatever appliance you have, it might so much current might pass that it might burn. Yeah, in this case, wires don't really burn that easily, but the battery will get exhausted really, really quickly. So what we're telling you here is that lemon juice is a good conductor. Use an LED to make it even more obvious. Now that you have tested for lemon juice, what else can you test for? Yeah, our infamous tap water, right? That's the what that's the substance that we are always in contact with. We really want to know if it's a good conductor or a bad conductor because if it is a bad conductor, then you shouldn't be this worried. So you take tap water. And then you put it, stick the two in. What do you find? Surprise, surprise! All our parents' advice was true. It is a good conductor. Like the light, the bulb is glowing. So you're like, okay. Then you try it with something else. You try it with salt solution, right? You take some very, very common salt, the one that you find in the kitchen. Put it in some water, right? And nicely mix it, and then see what happens. And next, you want to play with vinegar. Vinegar is actually just acetic acid. It's a it's a dilute solution of acetic acid. So you put vinegar inside. I'm emphasizing on the word acid so that you understand which substances are kind of conducting electric current. So you put that and put these two little ends of your tester there. 
the bulb glows. So acetic acid or vinegar conducts electricity. What have you seen before? Lemon juice conducts electricity. 